This is the GIS News Hour for Friday, 16th September. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, draft framework agreement to be prepared following energy discussions between Grenada and Trinidad. Chronic non-communicable diseases, a major talking point at next week's UN General Assembly and health apprenticeship program to begin later this year. Details are next. save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Hats off to the men in boots. They've heard your cries for fresh, sweet, homegrown bananas, just like the good old days. So get yours today for a healthier you. Loaded with goodness, fresh, homegrown bananas. Available on sidewalks, supermarkets, shops, and at the nation's number one retailer of fresh, top quality local fruits and vegetables, the Marketing and National Importing Board. Welcome home, local bananas. And remember... Hats off to the men in boots, our nation's farmers. Welcome back, viewers. Grenada's Minister with Responsibility for Energy says a conscious, deliberate and well-defined program of work will be undertaken to bring Grenada as close as possible to realizing the prospects for oil and gas in its waters. Minister Nazim Burke, who is also the country's Minister for Finance, was speaking with members of the media following discussions in Trinidad with his counterpart, Senator Kevin Ramnerine. He says they discussed possible areas of cooperation between both countries regarding oil and gas development and how they will proceed with issues relating to the possibility of resources that may straddle the border now that the Boundary Delimitation Treaty has been concluded. One of the things that we talked about in particular was the possibility of undertaking and the likelihood of undertaking joint seismic work where we will do seismic surveys uh, in and around the relevant portions of Grenada's waters so as to explore what reserves, if any, we may have and to determine whether and to what extent there may be opportunities for joint development of our resources or the unitization of uh, certain prospects that may be found. We talked about uh, the need for us to develop a joint work program uh, for the two countries uh, in oil and gas exploration and possible exploitation over the next 12 months, a uh, joint program of collaboration, I should say. And we also discussed a framework agreement that will cover um, the areas of cooperation between the two countries, especially as they relate to training of our young persons and uh, generally how the two countries are going to cooperate as we go forward. So this was an extremely historic uh, opportunity for us. We are very pleased with the way the discussions went. And uh, we've agreed, among other things, that uh, joint technical teams from both Trinidad and Grenada will work together uh, in the implementation and development of further work as we go forward. So this was a very important meeting for us in Trinidad today. It was agreed that a draft framework agreement will be prepared and reviewed by both countries before the end of the year. And as a matter of priority, joint seismic studies will be conducted in the areas of interest. At the moment, uh, the Trinidad side is going to prepare a draft framework agreement for consideration by uh, the Grenadian side. So uh, they have already indicated that uh, they are in very advanced stages of completing that draft, uh, at least for their internal discussions. 
Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, on their side is responsible for the draft. And as soon as that is uh, made available to us, we will consider it internally and then, of course, engage in uh, negotiations as to the content of that agreement. A Grenada technical team will be put together to work with its Trinidad counterparts to prepare and expedite a joint work program for the next 12 months. Climate change, security and counter-terrorism measures are just some of the major issues that will be discussed when world leaders meet from next week Monday for the 66th General Assembly of the United Nations. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas will lead a delegation of government ministers to the meeting. There will also be a high-level meeting of the General Assembly on desertification and the 10th anniversary of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. The other critical issues on the agenda will be related to counterterrorism and how we can deal with that from a global perspective but also to its impact on small states in the context of uh, the growing cost of, of security and how the, re the region uh, can react through CARICOM that's a major agenda item on CARICOM as well and will be discuss discussed at the level of the, of the United Nations so those are two of the areas from a United Nations perspective that Prime Minister will be involved in in addition to that, while he's in New York and uh, he will be attending the uh, meeting of the CGI, the Clinton Global Initiative, and that will speak to issues of how the how world leaders can position their countries and their representation in dealing with issues that are critical on the social agenda, issues of job creation and employment, um, issues of, uh, of of drought and 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 farming and disease, issues of ensuring that we can. Uh, stimulate food security, not just from a local perspective and not from an island perspective, but certainly from a global perspective. So the Prime Minister will be, will be in those discussions. <clears throat> That's Richard Simon, the Press Secretary to the Prime Minister. He will also be part of the Grenada delegation. There will also be meetings on the fringes of the summit, the details of which are now being worked out. There will be some time for that because of course the Prime Minister will not be attending every meeting, but so certainly he'd like to meet on the fringes with some some of the organizations. In fact, I know, for example, that one is being lined up with the Nature Conservancy um, in the context of promoting tourism and promoting green tourism. And Grenada certainly is interested in, in that. And I know that the, the Nature Conservancy has planned, uh, Conservancy rather, sorry, has planned a meeting with, with the Prime Minister to discuss that as an issue. So we expect that there'll, there will be a lot of discussions that concerns environmental issues. Um, given the importance of that in the world, that's totally outside and a part of the global warming question, but certainly the protection of the environment issues, uh, I'm sure, that relates to how Grenada fits in with its, global, with its, uh, its, its carbon footprint will certainly be um, on the agenda of some of those side meetings that will take place. Palestinian leaders have said that they will formally request recognition of their state and full membership of the UN, despite strong U.S. opposition amid warnings that such a move would jeopardize future talks. Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian president, will personally present the application to the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon before the UN General Assembly opens next week. Meanwhile, health experts and leaders from as many as 193 nations will meet at the United Nations on Monday and Tuesday to discuss strategies to combat chronic non-communicable diseases. The diseases include hypertension or high blood pressure, diabetes and cancer. It will be the first time the UN is focusing on the major killer of most people. Health Minister Senator Ann Peters told the Government Information Service there is need for serious discussion on the subject which takes a toll on the region's productive sector. The United Nations will be looking at um, a policy direction and a framework for going forward in how us as, as nations of the world address those issues of chronic non-communicable disease because they eat up a large portion of the health budgets around the world. Um, following that meeting, I am going on to Washington, D.C. to attend the first board meeting of the Caribbean Public Health Agency. That's an agency that's coming together to pull all of the supporting institutions of CARICOM, i.e. CAREC, say he and a couple of those others they're all going to be pulled under one unit called the caribbean public health agency and i am going to be serving on that board for one year in the initial stage i then proceed to um to participate in the health minister's meeting as part of the preparatory process for the paho annual meeting which is going to follow through on the 26th to the 30th of um 30th of september so i have a, about four meetings back to back the high level meeting on 
chronic non-communicable diseases, the, the Caribbean Public Health Agency meeting, the health ministers meeting, the meeting of the board of directors of SEHI, and then the PAHO meeting. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas has pointed to the importance of efficient management for positive growth of the economy. He was addressing the first in a series of nationwide parish meetings at the St. Patrick Anglican School on Thursday evening. It comes following last week's national address on the government's economic plan and update where he spelled out the necessity of having a workable plan in place to ensure the quick implementation of carefully selected major projects for the next 24 months. During Thursday's parish meeting, Prime Minister Thomas, who is also the MP for St. Patrick East, spoke optimistically about positive growth in the economy. He said the country is not as stagnant as many may believe. We know things are difficult, but at times people make it appear as if things are just dormant and great, but it is not. There are lots of small businesses that have been operating and creating a small employment. And as was mentioned in the address last week, in the last three quarters, we have experienced positive growth in the economy of 1%, coming from a negative of 7.7 7 in 2009. We reduced it to 1.3 in 2010, and now we are on a positive growth. So we have been building a, a solid foundation, and uh, we are seeing some positive signs. Having in regards to what is happening in the world, we know that um, the, the, the whole economy is in some uh, crisis. But um, our economy has been properly managed. Notwithstanding the difficulties we've been experiencing, the Grenadian economy has been properly managed. We've been able to pay our, our public officers and meet our uh, general uh, uh, commitments. And uh, as time goes by, we are seeing more, more positive signs. We expect the economy to take a more uh, positive direction, growth. We are looking at growth in the uh, economy. So brothers and sisters, overall, um, we have... Some of those who attended the meeting were concerned about the state of the health sector. Health Minister Senator Ann Peter says they are doing an assessment of the ambulance fleet in the country and are now gathering costings from various companies since they recognize the need for new vehicles. In our budget cycle coming into 2012, we have or we are planning to put into the budget requests for new ambulances. I can't tell you whether we will get six or 12, but we recognize the need. And we hope that the ones we have don't break down for now and we could still use them until we go into the budget cycle. Because we have to plan. You can't just buy these things off the back of your head. In some instances, we have to work with the companies to condition the ambulances to suit our terrain. And that's one of the concerns we have. Because a lot of times people say to you, I want to donate an ambulance. When the ambulance come, it can't go around them corners, can't climb up the hill, the body too broad. So when we're doing the ambulances, we have to make sure we work with the companies to custom or to fit the thing according to the Grenadian, the Grenadian topography. So bear with us. Yes, we know we have a lot to do, but we are working on the ambulances. Meanwhile, the MP for St. Patrick West, Joseph Gilbert, told those in attendance that work will soon begin on the St. George's market. We intend to spend over $3 million um, on that project to complete it. We owe the contractor, and owe, when I say we, I mean work done under the previous ad um, administration to the tune of $1 million, which has to be paid before we can continue that project. Um, so overall, we'll spend something at like $4 million to complete the St. George's market. And there are several other projects that, that we will see come on stream um, definitely within the next few months. So as I said earlier, there are others that will come on stream, but what we have given you in the rollout, uh, the project that we are sure will come on stream within the next few months. In other news, the Ministries of Health and Youth are collaborating on an 18-month apprenticeship program which will expose a number of young people to professional training in health. The idea behind the program, which begins later this year, is to ensure there is continuity and an available skill set by getting young people interested in healthcare. Areas to be covered include imaging or x-ray, patient relations, environmental health, as well as health promotion and prevention. We're recognizing there is need for transformation of the sector. And if we talk in prevention and we're talking 
early diagnosis, early management and treatment, we have to look at all of those issues. And I always repeat this thing over and over, the health system is a 24-hour system. So we are looking at ensuring that our allied support services will have to operate on a 24-hour basis. We can no longer run a system where the X-ray technologists are working 8 to 4. People don't stop getting sick, sick after 4 o'clock. But to do that, you have to plan for the human resource needs of the sector. So in essence, it can be a training ground for future experts? Very sense. much so. It's, it is a training ground for the future experts. That's Health Minister Senator Ann Peters. An orientation session for the more than three dozen participants was held on Friday after months of planning and designing the program. Senator Peters says it will create career opportunities for dozens of young Grenadians and a solid foundation on which they can build a lifetime public health career. After this morning's um, consultation with the heads of department, what will happen is that the Quality Improvement Coordinator, along with the Director at the Ministry of Youth and em Youth Empowerment, will begin the process of, of uh, placing students in the appropriate areas based on their prerequisite qualifications. In other words, if the prerequisite entry skills for training in an institution anywhere in the region for radiology is X number of subjects inclusive of language, whatever it is, these students have to come into the program with those prerequisite entry skills. Because what we don't want is to have a student participate in a program and when you try to place them in a formal institution, they cannot be accepted because they do not have the prerequisite entry skills. It is also going to give young people an opportunity to get a feel for the area and to really and truly recognize whether this is something they like or which is something they don't like. So it's going to be an 18 month program um, where we partner with the Ministry of Youth and at the end of it, students will get um, the necessary skills certificate. And of course, we in the ministry will be working feverishly to make the necessary arrangements to see all the vacancies that are available and where we can fit them. As, as beginning um, professionals. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. message from the Supervisor of Elections Parliamentary Elections Office on registration offices and office locations throughout the tri island State. For the constituency of Karikou and P.T. Martin, Registration Officer Dominic McFarlane, office located Kim's Building, Church Street, next to Hills and Valleys Pharmacy. St. Andrew Southeast, Sherry and Belfon in the Agricultural Office, Seaton James Street, Grenville. St. Andrew Southwest, Dennis Perrot, Grambra, next to the Community Center. St. Andrew Northeast, Percival Berg, is the Henry Davis Building Junction of Paradise and Cocoa Road, St. Andrew. St. Andrew Northwest, Leslie and James, Annex, next to Mr. Mitchell Shop, Maribel. St. David, Vincent Moraine, the former NCB Building, Pity Esperance, St. David's. Town of St. George, Sharon Duncan, GOT Credit Union Building, First Floor, Grenville Street. St. George Northeast, Wilford Jones, Decodes Building Complex, Mount Gay. And Dr. Alexis Building, The Green St. Paul's. St. George Northwest, Kevin Francis, two-story building on the Happy Hill Main Road between the Shadina Road and the Ice Cream Parlor. St. George's Southeast, Ronald Simon, Marion Community Center. St. George South, Royal Charles, The Limes, Grand Ants, first building on the right. St. John, Anthony Gentle, downstairs Mr. Carlton's Frederick Residence, Langton Road, St. John. St. Mark, Samuel Britton, downstairs Mr. Marnell Straker's building, Diamond Street, Victoria. St. Patrick East, Leaf and Henry, IDC Building, Sertes. And St. Patrick West, Ian James, IDC Building, Sertes. It's a message from the Supervisor of Election, Parliamentary Elections Office.
Continuing the news, 12 students pursuing the refrigeration and air conditioning course at the T. Marichu Community College have been awarded full scholarships for the two years of their program at the school. This was made possible by the National Ozone Unit in the Ministry of Finance and the Grenada Refrigeration, Air Conditioning and Ventilating Association, GRAVA. A ceremony was held at the Hospitality Arts Department in Old Trafford on Friday. Abigail McIntyre reports. The second time that the unit has embarked on such an initiative where they provide tuition costs, books and uniforms for the students while GRAVA provides toolkits containing the basic equipment needed. The Tia Marishore Community College also received a donation of state-of-the-art refrigerants to aid in teaching the course as well as a check. This initiative is part of a broader thrust by the ozone unit as part of the Montreal Protocol to phase out all ozone depleting substances. Though Grenada is not a producer of these substances, it is highly consumed in the refrigeration and air conditioning sectors. So by providing assistance to students and the school, they believe that a process of building an ozone-friendly workforce will be easier. Last year, 10 students were awarded a scholarship, and this year, out of about 20-plus applications, 12 met the criteria. National Ozone Officer Leslie Smith says the process was fair and transparent and believes the students chosen are well deserving of it. Together with myself, we sat together to go through all of those entries, those applicants we had, to come up with a final list of names. And let me say to you that amongst the criteria used for coming up with the names of students, we had to look at, first of all, the students meeting the TAMCC entry level requirements based on the number of subject passes and English included. We also look at the households they came from, the number of persons in the households, the number of persons that were working in the households. We also look at the geographic representation, and I'm happy to say that we have somebody from Karyaku who will be awarded today. And we also look at gender equity, because we had female applicants also applying for the scholarship. And amongst all of these, together with the essays that they had to write, we were able to come up with these 12 students who will be presented today. Today's exercise, as I said earlier, is part of Grenada's hydrochlorofluorocarbons phase-out management plan. It's a plan that we, we launched in June of this year. Grenada was amongst the first of Latin America and the Caribbean countries to receive funding from the Multilateral Fund of the United Nations Environment Program for this particular phase-out. And we were also the first to launch this program Registrar at TAMCC, Dr. Nigel Grove Sandy, noted positive changes and developments in the refrigeration and air conditioning program since the ozone unit started providing scholarships. He says five years ago, the program had a maximum of five students, but as of 2010 to 2011, it is up to 21. Dr. Grove Sandy added that the program at the school is now the envy amongst others in the region. The Crane Resort one of the leading diamond hotels in Barbados. Recognizing the paucity of these skills in Barbados, engaged the college, and we were able to have 10 of our students in this program journey to Barbados to have some practical internship in the air conditioning and refrigeration program complementing the theoretical aspects that they would have learned to the college. In fact, they confirmed that they could not find such skills in Barbados. And for the academic year 2012, 2011, 2012, they have signaled their intention of taking another 10 students to do their mandatory internship program in Barbados. This is the kind of interaction and engagement that is bringing benefit. And as the college sees its role as expanding the coverage in tertiary education that is expensive to deliver, we recognize that the government alone cannot provide the resources that are required in order to deliver these programs. And it is in this context that the college has taken a serious policy decision to partner with regional, international and domestic entities in expanding this coverage. 
Minister Buck says Grenada is known and well respected around the region for its work and success in phasing out ozone depleting substances. As it stands now, Grenada leads the rest of the region in this process. Grenada has played a leading role in a number of areas along the path of sustainable development. As the chairperson of EOSIS over the years, as leaders in ozone depletion practices and the phase out of ozone depleting substances, and of course now uh, attempting to play a leading role also in the establishment of SIDSDOC, an agency for renewable energy, a number of initiatives in which Grenada is playing that leading role. Today, I think you have an opportunity, the awardees, to make your mark. Uh, Honorable Michael Schultz spoke about the business opportunities that come with it. You have to realize this is truly an opportunity for you. Dennis Lyons is a 2010 scholarship awardee and one of the few students on the dean's list from the technical department. He had some words of encouragement for the new awardees at Friday's ceremony. I like to see um, don't give up, you know, and yeah, you have to love what you're doing to really go forward in it. I mean, the money, money is good, but you can't really go in it for the money because, you know, you'll be going for the wrong reason. Yeah, and I have, I have a kind of mindset there that parents always say, you know, um, friends bring you go and they don't really bring you back. But I would like to tone that a little bit and see friends bring you go if you want to go. Because, because it, it all begins with you and it, it's your mind. They, they, can, they could say things, but they can't really come into your mind and make you do what you don't want to do. So they bring you go if you want to go. So it's up to you to know where you came from, to know where you're going, and just keep a focus, you know. For the GIS News Hour, I am Abigail McIntyre reporting. A major contribution from Republic Bank Grenada Limited to the Resource Center for the Blind. The center received two closed circuit televisions, six brailers, and 50 cartons of braille paper, all valued at $63,480. This was handed over during a ceremony at the center on Friday. Principal Vernis Moraine is happy for the gift. This contribution will go towards the purchase of basic, essential, and invaluable um, materials and equipment for the blind and visually impaired children. And it is very timely as a staff at the Resource Center for the Blind We've chosen as our theme this year, blind and visually impaired children on the road to independence. I want to assure you that your decision to answer our call was a good one. And your extremely generous contribution today will make a difference in the life of our students. Minister for Education, Senator Frank Bernadine, says the contribution made by Republic Bank shows its support for basic human rights. She says when organizations assist in the development of infrastructure needed for enhancing education, it makes the work of government easier. We must now provide the necessary support services to make the playing field more level. We must never lose sight of their ability. And so today's donation speaks to all of this in loud tones. Today's Braille equipment, with all its modern technological advances, will make it possible for so many more visually impaired persons to become empowered through education. It would open the doors, therefore, to employment opportunities. It would allow greater participation in all activities, writing, editorials, communication skills generally. It could potentially change a person's life around to a new beginning. 
Friday's handing over forms part of Republic Bank's Power to Make a Difference program. General Manager Donna Lander says it's not just about giving money, but caring for people in the communities they serve. As a financial institution, we pride ourselves on being not just a bank with banking products and services, but an institution with a heart that cares. It is therefore extremely gratifying for us to be able to make this contribution to the center. To the students of this center, you have shown, despite the daily challenges associated with visual impairment, how determined you are to overcome these challenges and to make a meaningful contribution in your respective communities. Your resilience and determination to educate yourselves in an effort to be more readily, to more readily adapt to everyday life are most commendable and deserving of support. Virgin Atlantic has confirmed its commitment to the Caribbean market by adding more flights and premium economy seats to the region. According to Travel Daily UK Online, the airline will increase its capacity this winter, including a second weekly flight from Manchester to Barbados, a third weekly flight between Gatwick and Havana, plus a second weekly service to Tobago and Grenada will also be added. Speaking at the Caribbean Tourism Organization's State of Industry Conference in St. Martin, Edmund Rose, Director of Commercial and Revenue Planning at Virgin Atlantic, said the changes in onboard product would bring more high-end leisure travelers to the eight Caribbean destinations it flies to. He says adding 14% more premium economy seats to their 747s servicing the Caribbean routes will bring direct economic benefits for Caribbean tourism and will also be good news for business communities which depend upon reliable premium quality services to the UK and beyond. And a brief note before we end, a special church service will be held from 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 20 to mark the opening of the law year 2011-2012. The service will be held at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception and will be conducted by His Lordship Bishop Vincent Darius. Following that, there will be a parade to the courtyard where Her Majesty's Guard of Honor will be mounted and inspected by the Honorable Madam Justice Claire Henry. At 10 a.m. in the number one High Court, a special sitting of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court will be held where the address of Honorable Chief Justice Hugh Rollins will be delivered via telecast. That's the news. Sport is up next. Mother, I would not be caught off guard for this hurricane season. Mr. Ivan and Miss Emily taught my family and I a serious lesson. Them long lines in the burning hot sun, asking for handouts, not me again, not me again. So I am shopping very early for the supplies my family needs for this active season. Join with me and do the same. fans a night of dominance for Jamaican athletes in Brussels. Johan Blake threatened Usain Bolt's world record when he ran 19.26 seconds to win the 200 meters at the Memorial Van Damme Diamond League meeting in Brussels. 
Blake's time is the second fastest ever behind Houston Bowles, 19.19 seconds. American Walter Dix was second in a personal best time of 19.53 seconds, while Nikel Amide finished third, his time 19.91 seconds. Jamaican athletes dominated the sprint events with Bowles setting a world-leading mark of 9.76 seconds win in the men's 100 meters dash. A time that improved on Asafa Powell's 9.78 seconds year best. World Championship finalist and relay gold medalist Nesta Carter was second in 9.89 seconds, while another Jamaican, Lauren Clark, finished third, his time 10.05 seconds. However, American world champion Kamalita Jetta clocked 10.78 seconds to win the women's 100 meters, beating Jamaica's Veronica Campbell-Brown, who had a time of 10.8 eight five seconds to finish second well the olympics is still another 12 months away well just under 12 months and speculations are continuing as to whether or not grenada's kirani james can run the fastest time ever michael jordan johnson of the united states he has the fastest time for the 400 meters that is 43.18 seconds followed by another American, Butch Reynolds, his time 43.29 seconds. One man who knows Kirani very well is his first coach, Albert Joseph. In 2009, um, Clyde Hatt, who was the coach of Michael Johnson and Jeremy Warner, came to Grenada to try to recruit Kirani. Mm -hmm. And from what he was saying, is Kirani, he thinks Kirani is the person that's going to run 40, the first person that's going to run 42. 42. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what he said to us. Yeah. Who is he? Who said that? Clyde Hart. Clyde Hart. Mm -hmm. so he's, he's he was the coach of Michael Johnson mm -hmm. and Jeremy Warner. So, so he came here and you, you met him? Yes. Right. So they would have seen him from the world junior? From time. youths, juniors and so on. So at that point he attracted the best in the world? Right. So that's interesting. You, when you started this program, you, I mean, you could have seen yourself being approached by these superhumans in terms of athletics. Uh, no. Coming to Guam, knocking at your door to find out about what a primary school uh, boy and the GBSS. Uh, at the time, no. <laughs> it, it, it certainly, uh, I would think, is a confidence boost and it tells you a story. Because you are what IWF level level three, five level five coach, yeah. right? And um, to have these gentlemen come in to knock at you, do it's really an achievement. Yeah, well, the the IWF courses. I mean, some of the other organizations that have courses, they think that the IWF courses are not are not that good. But when you go to meets like World Youth, World Juniors, and so on, most of the the athletes that win, they are been coached by the coaches that did the IWF courses. Grenada's Jason Roberts, Blackburn Rovers, will be in action on Saturday in the British Premier League. They will be up against Arsenal. It's not been a great season for Arsenal. They have struggled, but so too have Blackburn Rovers. They picked up their first point in the BPL last Saturday, and Roberts is hoping that they can continue on a part of success against Arsenal. It's a big challenge, obviously, Arsenal. Everybody knows what a good side they are. and They're going through a bit of a hard time now, but sometimes that can be worse. You know, they can react at any time with the players they have. People like Van Persie, Walcott, Al Sharvin. These are all top players. So we're going to have to be very, very um, disciplined in what we have to do because they are top side, no doubt about it. But as well, there are opportunities to get at them as well. And uh, that's what we've been focusing on today. That's what we were focusing on yesterday. So um, we're very much looking forward to the game. Arsenal, as we indicated, they have had a very poor start to the season, winning just one fixture. And Roberts think that his team, Blackburn Rovers, can put the pressure on Arsenal. During the past few weeks, Arsenal, they have lost several of their key players. I think any time you lose players like that, it's going to be tough. But they have a good young squad. And the thing with top players is they always react. When things are going badly, they always react. 
So uh, we don't want it to be this week. We're hoping for them to start reacting next week. Um, hopefully it's a good opportunity for us to try and get something. But um, we have to give them the respect. This is a side that, uh, that is doing well in the Champions League and is a top four side, in my opinion. So always it's going to be hard in this sort of situation for us. But um, we have to remain positive. We've beaten Arsenal before at that, uh, um, Ewood Park. So let's remain focused that we can do it again. Regional Super 50, that's how the West Indies Cricket Board has rebranded its limited overs tournament. In addition to the new name, the Regional Super 50 will include several new super features, which are geared towards making the game more exciting for fans and more engaging for the players. Principally among the innovations will be a new rule which will allow two bowlers on each side to bowl a maximum of 12 overs each during a 50 over game. The remaining bowlers can bowl a maximum of 10 overs each. The overs will be reduced proportionately in the event of a shortened game. Previously bowlers were allowed to bowl a maximum of 10 overs each. Another major innovation in the regional cricket tournament will be the use of two balls a new ball will be used by bowlers at each end of the pitch. No longer will all bowlers have to share the same ball throughout an innings. A third innovation will be that the batting and bowling power plays will have to be taken between the 16th and 40th overs. Traditionally, since the introduction of the power plays, the batting sides have taken the batting power plays after the 40th over. The regional Super 50, which will be played in Ghana from October the 18th to the 29th, will also see the removal of the mandatory close catcher rule from four fielders to be allowed outside of the circle in the non-power play overs. The Champions Trophy and several trophies will, for the best players in the tournament will be named after legendary West Indian players. The names of the legends will be announced in the coming days. Well, let's go back to football. Manchester United boss Alex Ferguson says it would be wrong to dismiss Chelsea's chances of winning the English Premier League this season. United, along with local rivals Manchester City, hold 100% record after four games and meet Chelsea at Old Trafford on Sunday. Chelsea will also want to test United defenders and see how they react collectively because the season has seen a cruise thus far. The Manchester United teams are enjoying the great publicity, but on the other hand, Chelsea's performance is being questioned. The Blues have made an unbeaten start to their campaign and lie third in the table, two points behind United and City, respectively. The Grenada national football team is leaving for St. Vincent for this weekend's fixture on Sunday. The national team is endeavoring to recover from an embarrassing 3-0 trashing suffered at the hands of Belize two weeks ago. Coach of the team, Nat Simpson, is, in, is optimistic that he will see our improved performance against the Vincentians on Sunday at the Arnesville playing field. St. Vincent also made a post start. They were trashed by Guatemala, four goals to nil. Grenada needs to win this game to rebound in their wrong robin group contest, which also includes Belize, Guatemala, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Just one team from that group will advance to the second phase of the 2014 World Cup qualifying tournament. And England, well, rather let's say Great Britain, uh, one step closer to playing in the Europe-Africa Group 1 of the Davis Cup in 2012. Andy Murray and James Ward both won their opening singles matches to put Great Britain on the verge of victory against Hungary in the Europe-Africa Group 2 tie. It's been played in Hungary. Murray beat his part-time opponent, Sibo Kiss, 6 love 6 2 7 6. And there was a win for Ward. He went four sets and overcame an ankle injury, winning his game 6-4, 6-4, 4-6, 6-4. If Great Britain 
wins the doubles on Saturday, they will win promotion to the Europe Africa Group 1 of the Davis Cup. That is your sport, and thanks for viewing. Don't you go. We still have much more ahead. Stay with us on GIS. a student of the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Do you know that the hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th? Hurricanes are known for their destructive winds, storm surges, and heavy rainfall, which may cause flooding. Therefore, it is important to keep all drains and streams clean from debris at all times. Prepare your home and all supplies well in advance. Protect your loved ones before, during and after the hurricane. Assist your family, neighbors and community. Let us ensure that Grenada is a safe place before, during and after the hurricane. Hi, I'm Rose Bagon, a student of the Beacon High School. Do you know what you should do during a hurricane? Allow me to share a few tips with you. Listen constantly to your local radio station or television for hurricane progress reports. Keep a supply of flashlights, extra batteries, and bulbs at hand. Avoid candles and kerosene lamps. Stay inside, away from windows, skylights, and glass doors. And remember, do not panic. Welcome back. Just to let you know once again, a special church service will be held from 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 20, to mark the opening of the law year 2011-2012. The service will be held at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception and will be conducted by His Lordship Bishop Vincent Darius. Following the service, there will be a parade to the courtyard where Her Majesty's Guard of Honor will be mounted and inspected by the Honorable Madam Justice Claire Henry. At 10 a.m. in the number one High Court, a special sitting of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court will be held, where the address of Honorable Chief Justice Hugh Rawlins will be delivered via telecast. Recapping the main points, draft framework agreement to be prepared following energy discussions between Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago. Chronic non-communicable diseases, a major talking point at next week's UN General Assembly in New York, and health apprenticeship program to begin here later this year. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. You're watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.